Good. I can see Lucas as a speaker now. Hi, Lucas. How are you today? Hi. How are you? I'm pretty fine. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Inviting me. Cool. Cool. Good sound quality. So I'm really looking forward to our discussion. So let me start with some organizational stuff. So welcome everyone to the fourth session of Fiat Free Twitter Space that's co-hosted by Trezor. And tonight or this afternoon, depends on when you where you are, we will discuss the situation in Argentina with Lucas, a Bitcoiner from Argentina. And Lucas is a Wasabi wallet developer that's currently living in Argentina with lots of stories on how to survive hyperinflation and uh, persistently high inflation as Argentina is seeing in the past couple of years. And before we get into it, some organizational matters. This space is being recorded and will be published later on the Trezor YouTube channel, as well as other podcasting platforms. And initially, we will have a one-on-one -on -one discussion with Lucas. <clears throat> But feel free to raise your hand throughout the discussion and request uh, be joining us as a speaker. And we'll give you an opportunity to ask your question uh, after some time, after our initial discussion. If you don't want your voice recorded, you can just comment on the Trezor Spaces tweet uh, or send a direct message and I'll raise your question for you. So let's get into it. And uh, I would like to give our listeners like a snapshot of the economic condition and economic history of Argentina so that we know what's actually going on in the country. The current inflation rate in Argentina The official one is around 50%. And the inflation rate in the country has been 30 to 50% in the past five years. So uh, the Argentinian peso has been devalued uh, like in a pretty major way because uh, 30 to 50% basically takes all your purchasing power away if it takes uh, that long, if it takes like five, five years. And Argentina is the country with most defaults in history. Over 200 years since Argentina uh, gained its independence, Argentina has defaulted nine times on its debt and three times in the past 20 years. Since 2001, the country has defaulted three times and the last default was in just recently in 2020. Uh, but what's quite curious about the country is uh, 100 years ago, Around 1913, Argentina was the world's 10th wealthiest country per capita. And uh, the quality of life was similar to Germany or France. There were a lot of European immigration in there. It was just uh, like uh, it, it, 100 years ago, if you were deciding to escape Europe, uh, you were deciding to go either to US or a lot of time Argentina, because it was uh, <laughs> a very wealthy place to be. And uh, 100 years after, it's uh, it's a totally different country, and it has been basically destroyed by the politicians and by the central bank. The central bank of Argentina was established in 1935, and since then, the country underwent eight currency crises, a hyperinflation uh in late 80s, early 90s, five currency reforms and five defaults since 1935, since the central bank was established. Current debt to GDP is over 100%. And uh, this cannot be actually printed away with high inflation because a lot of the debt is in dollars. And uh, let me finish this introduc introduction with uh, a little joke that I have recently heard. Uh, and maybe Lucas, let me know if this, if you know this joke, uh, it's like, always remember Argentina's economy grows at night. And why is that? Lucas, do you know why Argentina's economy grows only at night? <laughs> Because politicians sleep. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't know. I didn't know. 
Honestly, sorry, sorry. I honestly didn't know. No, that's great. Uh, but it's natural for you, probably. It's quite natural for you to respond this way. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's the situation in the country. So, Lucas, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you grew up in Argentina during uh, the hyperinflation event of late 80s, early 90s, right? So if you could describe like what was your childhood like in this environment? Yes, of course. Well, uh, basically right now I'm, I'm 43 years old and uh, I f really don't remember exactly what it feels to be in, an, in a normal country. I mean, a country without inflation. Uh, it's not that... Um, To me, inflation is normal. I can see it's not normal, but uh, it's just that I don't remember what how normality looks like, right? Um, in those years when I was um, 11, 12 years old, more or less, um, there were two um, hyperinflations, right? Uh, with just a year, more or less, of it between them. Um, and... What I remember is that, to me, what is an hyperinflation and what is not an hyperinflation, it was a bit fuzzy because basically there is this definition that, well, hyperinflation is when the inflation cross some uh, hard-coded limit or threshold, right? That is quite arbitrary. Uh, that's why, for example, here ma many many people say, "No, well, the inflation just was uh, lasted for a couple of months, but then after that, the the inflation levels uh, went down to something more normal, close to 500%. percent." Well, yes, if we set the inflation threshold to whatever is above. I don't know, a million percent, then we never will suffer any inflation, right? But 200%, 500%, or, or, or 80%, it, it doesn't matter if you call it inflation or not. It's, 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 it's really problematic. So basically, I use my definition. Um, I, I, I take the title of a, a, a book that I have no read, that is uh, When Money Dies. And I think that is hyperinflation. That, that title is, is, is good. When money uh, loses all its properties, when it's not useful for store value, when it's not useful for medium of exchange, when it, you cannot, the, the portability of the money is, is is bad because you need a lot a lot of paper money to, to buy uh, a candy. So when money, when all the properties of the money die, well, money dies also, right? So um, basically that is my, my, my definition. And the result of that is basically uh, What I, I honestly, I, I remember only a few things because I was, again, 10, 11, 12 years old, right? And so obviously my parents uh, isolated me from, from the hard problems. So uh, uh, what I remember is it's um, things that sounds like curiosities, right? Because um, this is like... A, the Italian movie, uh, La Vita Bella, uh, where the, the, the boy is in a concentration camp, but the, the, the father uh, takes care of, protect, pro of protecting him. So he believed that he's in a, in a, uh, in a, it's like vacations. He believes that it is in vacations with his uh, Uh, father, basically. Well, something, okay, no, no so extreme, but more or less. And the problem is basically, I remember things that then after a while, I, 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 I realized are the consequence of 
hyperinflation. That is basically that um, in the end, you have no more electricity and you have no more water, right? Um, and I noticed this uh, because that happened to Venezuela. And I said, wait, it, this is not something, uh, uh, this is not a coincidence. I mean, they had no more electricity and had no more water. And I remember that in Argentina, we didn't have electricity and, 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 and water during hyperinflation. Uh, so that's basically, I think, I believe it's because uh, the hyperinflation hurt the system. I mean, let me explain this a bit better. We human beings cannot, are not like other animals, right? We, we cannot hunt just by running behind a, <laughs> our food. So we need an extremely complex system with that is really, really hard to coordinate and, 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 and a lot of cooperation in order to survive. Right. So if you destroy that system that keep us alive, right, that is what, in, in my opinion, hyperinflation uh, does, uh, well, you, 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 the country be, becomes a really, really hard place to live. So uh, that's why I'm sure you heard that. Uh, People said that in Venezuela they had an, an humanitarian crisis because that is what hyperinflation is. It's a an, an humanitarian crisis because basically there is no, if you have no water, you have no electricity. I mean, you have water, but no, no, every, every single day. Electricity, again, is, you have electricity, but it's not uh, reliable, right? I mean, sometimes you have, sometimes you don't. Right. If you have no food, no electricity, no water, if if you have a, a lot of crime, looters, right, it, it, shortages of uh, everything. If if the doctors uh, leave the country, if the engineers leave the country, well, it's, uh, you know, it's um, uh, you have in troubles basically. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, as you as you say, like uh, humans need a sufficient division of labor and spe specialization on the market. And if this gets destroyed while like such a huge debasement as hyperinflation, the society basically bra breaks down. And you mentioned uh, When Money Dies, and that's an amazing book. I'm currently reading it. The full title is When Money Dies, The Nightmare of the Weimar Collapse. And yeah, I would recommend reading this to everyone. Because sort of like Argentina, Germany was uh, one of the most wealthy countries before the war. And in a few years, it, the society basically totally collapsed because of hyperinflation. So that's a good text. Yeah. Yes, I, 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 I can read that. I think I, I need to read that. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's curious because in some countries like, well, like Argentina, for example, we have hyperinflations without war, right? Mm. That's something, because yes, in, during, during wartime, it is more or less easy to understand that you have hyperinflation. But why do you have hyper, hyperinflations when in, in peacetime? Uh, and also another thing that is more or less curious, so I, I don't want to exaggerate them here, but I think that the feeling of, or, or the sentiment of, of people when they have, they don't know what they will eat tomorrow or how they are going to survive or, or, or they feel that something bad can happen to them or to their family because I don't know the levels of crime, the shortages again, um, and the the lack of basic services. It it could feel more or less similar to to be in in, in war time, right? I, I mean, knowing the battle, of course, it's not it's not in the battle, but 
you know, if there is a if there is a batter more or less near your your home, well, uh, it's expected, right, that you 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 have this uh, pessimist uh, feelings and that there is no food, there is no fuel and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so I've read your text on GitHub. It's called Hyperinflection. And I was curious if you could uh, maybe do a sh little rundown of uh, the strategies for surviving hyperinflation, because that was quite new to me, how people actually cope when you have uh, several thousand percent of annual inflation and you basically have to get rid of all your money as soon as you get it. So how do people cooperate in there, in this environment? Okay, you know, uh, my idea was to, to, to write about the, the, the strategies. I, I, I didn't do it yet, because this is an, a, a project that I abandoned because I, I didn't have time. And, but my idea was to first share some of my memories in order to, to, to make people feel what inflation uh, feels like, you know, because otherwise it's, if, if I explain, well, the, the, the prices go up, well, yes, who cares? But you, you have to, 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 to know what can happen to you, basically, to, to be alert. So uh, the, strategies, the strategies are different for, uh, for uh, every, every person is different, every family is different, so all the strategies are, are different. But basically, my idea was to say, okay, you, you, you can fight, you can fight, I mean, with following the rules or breaking the rules too, because I mean, it, it, it's something that you you're going to do anyway, because uh, it, it, the rules are against you, basically. But or you can use the, the most um, traditional strategy. The, the, the most common strategies is, is basically. Go, go to live some, somewhere else. It's, that is what the Venezuelan uh, people have been doing, right? They, they, now, we, are, we can see Venezuelan everywhere, right? If, if, if I go out and, and walk for, I don't know, 20 minutes, I will, be, I will see a Venezuelan here, right? Um, that is the, the most, uh, let's, let's call it the traditional way. And the problem is that, yes, it works, right? It works. It's more or less easy. Of course, leaving your country means leaving your family. It means leaving your, your friends, leaving all what you, what you love. You, you, you will be living in a country that, who knows, perhaps it, they don't speak your, your same language. Uh, they don't share your culture. They... Uh, I mean, it's it's not your place. So there are you, you have to understand that there are things that money can buy and things that money cannot buy, right? And, and, and many people that just leave the country don't don't understand that, or or they understand that and they accept the, the, the fact that they will never. Uh, there are people that they will never see again, who you knows, your granddad dies and you are uh, 10,000 kilometers away, so, well, it's, but, well, it, it, it works. Um, you can, of course, uh, stay and fight, uh, again, with the rules. The rules are basically... <laughs> try to outsmart the system. That is impossible because the system is designed to extract money from you, to extract uh, wealth from you. But uh, I think the, the state makes some mistakes that you can, that you can take the opportunity and, and, and use it in your favor. For example, they used to concentrate the, the credit So they take all the credit and also provides all the credit. So that that credit they, they want to 
stimulate the, the, the economy, right? Just by giving free money. So you can take all the credit that you can because debt in local currency uh, is a, it's a huge business. And of course, by dollars, bitcoins, um, real estate, uh, gold, or, 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 or whatever. Um, in Argentina, we prefer dollars, right? Or we, we prefer in the past, <laughs> right? Dollars, um, basically because it's quite liquid and also rather stable. Um, but that's it. Uh, of course, the, uh, you know, um, inflation uh, unleashes some very perverse dynamics in, in, in every single aspect of your life. For, so, for example, uh, if you are an employee, my recommendation is don't stay in the same company for more than one year or one year and a half or two years, right? Because um, companies, I mean, inflation um, makes companies lose money, basically, right? Mm -hmm. So you, f and to better negotiate for your salary increase, it's better to change jobs in this environment than to try to negotiate with your current employer, if I understand. Oh, we may have lost Lucas, so we'll wait a moment. If you can hear me, Lucas, um, I would like you maybe to explain FIADO, like the commodity credit that you described in your GitHub text, because that was quite interesting to me. Or maybe I can start before Lucas rejoins. Yeah, I hope all of you listeners can hear me so that it's, it's not on my side, but let, let, me, let me go on. Um, so, yeah, Lucas, if you can request uh, being a speaker. So FIADO, as Lucas uh, describes it in his document on GitHub, which we have linked to before, it's like a credit in the economy where money no longer holds any value for several days in the future. So the credit system works uh, basically as a barter where you go shopping and you don't have any money because you spent all your money uh, just as soon as you got it. And you buy, you buy like a kilogram of tomatoes from, uh, from your local shop. And instead of paying right now, you will have a credit entry at the the merchant saying uh, I owe one kilogram of, of uh, tomatoes worth of money and I will pay like in three weeks and I will pay the market price of tomatoes at that time. So that's quite interesting. It's, uh, it's a credit system that's based on the future value of goods that you are currently purchasing so that the merchant isn't hurt with uh, the rapidly rising price of goods that he's selling. So that was quite interesting to me. And yeah, maybe if there's uh, someone else in here who would like to join the discussion. Yeah, I can see Lucas now. I will confirm you. Yeah, Lucas, are you here? Yeah, I'm still connecting. <clears throat> So let's hope it works. Hello, Lucas. Can you hear me? Yes, hello. Sorry. Uh, sometimes you don't have internet near. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm used to it from these discussions. Uh, usually, like when we uh, when we have a call with someone from Lebanon or Turkey or Argentina, the connection isn't very good, so I'm used to it. So I was just explaining Fiado, 
uh, th that was like uh, amazing to me how people can actually work with credit if money no longer holds any value over the course of like several days. Oh yes, yes. Basically, um, the 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 trick is that the the, the money disappears from the from the equation, right? I, I say, okay, give, please, I need uh, sugar. So they give you the sugar and they just uh, record in in in, uh, in a notebook, let's say. Uh, Sugar, <laughs> that's all. So um, when you have to pay, you have to pay at the at the current price. It, it doesn't matter what the price is, uh, and that works. And things like that. Well, there are many, many, many things. Um, I don't know if I, 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 I. What was the last thing that you? You heard from me. Oh, well, um, yeah. Oh, sorry. If you have something to say, go ahead. No, well, basically, I, 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 my idea was, my recommendation was to don't stay in the same company for more than a year. Basically, you know, um, if you, the, the company, the, your salary will not rise at the same, at the same uh, speed than inflation, right? It, it will not. So m more time you stay in the same company, poorer you become. Right. So uh, of course, companies don't want to lose uh, employees because they have to train them. It's, they, they, it, it, it's a problem to lose a, a good employee. So the, they used to, to um, have this by one by one by one policy so they negotiate your salary directly with you then with your co-workers and we all de depending how much the, the the company love us right they, they increase our salary right so employees that are that are not very good they don't receive a, sal a salary increase right if you have 50 percent of inflation and you don't receive a, a, a salary update, well, next year you are 50% poorer, right? If you don't receive a, a salary increase in two years, well, you are in serious problems. So you don't have to, uh, well, and even if you outperform all your, your uh, co-workers, right? new hirings will be paid more than you because they are, that, that's how it works. So, don't stay in the same company. Don't do it, right? Uh, um, and, and, and things like that. There are a lot of dynamics that are hard to understand. But I remember when I worked for Motorola, I asked for a 20% increase in my salary because the inflation was more or less 20%. Uh, uh, no, a bit less, but I wanted 20%, basically. Uh, and it was extremely hard to explain to my um, American uh, managers why I wanted the 20% because it was something like unusual, right? So basically they didn't, <laughs> they didn't raise my salary 20% and I, I lived and I, 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 I got a much, much better salary. Um, well, yeah, and I'm curious, what's the situation for state employees, like the police, let's say, like, does the government actually increase their wages uh, by the inflation, official inflation number? And even if they do, um, that's like exposed, right? Because the prices have already risen before they get their salary increase. So I'm curious how it works uh, in like the public sector and if there is actually like a high level of corruptions so that these people can actually survive well it's a it's a it's a good question first of all the the, the government also centralized the the decisions of of how much the salaries have to increase 
of course, the selling point is we are protecting workers against, you know, um, the, 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 the businessman, right? But it's a double-edged sword, sword because basically sometimes they can in, increase your salary above the, the inflation, right? Uh, but the, the, the other, the other, uh, the, the opposite is also, also true. But uh, anyway, let, let, let me explain this. At the beginning, when prices start going up, the, 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 the government will not accept that they are printing money and they are creating this suffering, right? Because it's not, it's, it's not good. So the, the, the guilties are also always, always, well, external actors, right? You name it, right? It, 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 the, uh, the, the, guilt, the, the problem are the speculators, right? Um, whoever they are, right? Um, the, then it is because um, merchants are too greedy, right? Uh, well, that is the, the first step, right? So they want to protect people, right? By controlling prices, right? That's 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 how it works. Right? So yes. you have to in, in Argentina, for example, the same in Venezuela. Uh, there there are like army of um, para governmental um, agencies that goes to the supermarkets and control that you are not selling things to a different price because there was an agreement and blah blah blah. But the, the thing continues. I mean, you cannot. I mean, the only way you, you if you continue printing money, things will not uh, improve. Because basically, the problem is that if you print money and prices go up, well, you are in the same situation. So the the, the, the magic is if you print money and prices don't go up. That is what the government wants, right? So. Yeah. After a while, small merchants are are evil. The bread makers, right? The the, 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 the small stores, right? Are, they are the, the ones that are too greedy and they so but given a, after that you are the bad guy, right? You shouldn't ask for a, a, a salary rise. Because if, if, if we give you a salary rise, you will create in inflation, right? So in the end, right, the, the, this new narrative that increasing the salaries increases the, the, the inflation and that the inflation creates more demand for salary increases. Right? So in the end, always, <laughs> with almost no exception, right, the government wants to uh, stop the, 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 the salary rising. Right? So, but even, even, even before that, you, you have to know that the salaries, uh, it doesn't matter if they update it or not. It doesn't matter anything. You, you can see, for example, two years ago or three years ago, the, 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 the average salary in dollars in Argentina was um, uh, 1,200 1, dollars or something like that. And today is $400. So in, in real um, purchasing power, right, you lose. It doesn't matter anything. Um, so, yeah. Mm. So, how do, for example, pension scope? If you have like a pay-as-you-go system uh, in Argentina, uh, I can't imagine how we can actually survive if, like, ninety-five percent of the purchasing power evaporates in the span of five years, which is what basically happened. So, like. Um, what do you do if you're in such an environment? How can you protect yourself and your purchasing power? 
Okay, again, it, it is not easy. In fact, I think it's impossible because the system is designed in such a way that you always lose, right? Only a few, very, very few, very smart people can out, out, out I have to say, yes, outperform <laughs> the system, right? Uh, those are the, the so-called speculators, right? That's, that uh, they are only a few, and that's why it's, it's easy to make them the, 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 the enemies. But basically, the idea, it's the, the, the strategies are, if you understand the system, right? For example, my, my brother understands the system much better than me, and he what he does is he takes all the debt that he can, all, absolutely all, right? Credit cards, uh, loans that are provided by the by the, the the government because again the government concentrates all all the, the 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 credit or at least the cheap credit absolutely everything and buys as I told you bitcoins and U.S. dollars and I think U.S. dollars are good not not because it is stable in the mind of Argentinian people dollar is stable. In my mind, it's not a state, right? Because I, I know it is not a state. Um, but in the short term, right, uh, it is very, very liquid, very liquid. And it's in the short term, it's also quite stable. So you have different pools of liquidity with pesos for your daily uh, things, uh, dollars for, I don't know, a, a few months just in case, and, and Bitcoin, for example, right? Bitcoin is one of the, 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 the these strategies. So just to, 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 to go back to these strategies, you can, again, fight with, with the rules or against the rules. Because, for example, to play against the rules, well, don't pay taxes. Don't pay taxes because the government doesn't update the taxes as frequently, right? So... Okay, okay, pay the taxes, but not today, right? Wait, wait six months to pay the taxes, right? Other, other, because you are going to pay exactly the same, right? But um, it will be much cheaper for you, right? It, it all, also, all black mark is, is, is really, I mean, it's natural. Black market grows in these uh, eco economies because uh, basically the, the pressure over the, the, the legal market is, is, is impossible. I mean, you cannot buy dollars in the white market because it's, it's, uh, it's not allowed, right? Because the capital control. So you go, you, you need to go to the black market, right? Um, I don't know, to take advantage of the disequilibriums that are created by the system. Uh, here there are people that are really, really, really specialists. They are really smart. I cannot follow what they do. But, you know, they, they have these so-called loops where they, uh, for example, um, take advantages of the, um, uh, the uh, chair facts that uh, some credit cards uh, offers you. So, uh, they create these operations that um, again and again and again, and in every every iteration they they gain a very very small amount of money. It's all financial engineering that is is really too advanced for me. But there are a lot of people that can do that and they do it. Um, another thing that you have to do, by sure, is if you know. If you understand the logic and you understand the history, you don't let your money in the bank. Because basically, uh, Argentinians, for example, a, a 43 years old like me, uh, uh, an Argentinian guy like me, have seen two times how the government takes your money from the bank, right? And in I, I don't remember the, day, the, the the years, but I think it was more or less in 1991, I think. Um, all the savings from the, the, the people 
were taken taken for by the by, by the government. Um, they gave them some bonds to be paid in ten years or something like that. But of course, there are people that don't have ten years; they will die in five years, right? So they they had to sell those bonds for for a fraction of the the the, the value they have saved. Um, and in, again, I don't remember, but I think in 2001 or 2002, um, again, the government did something pretty similar. They took the dollars from the savings accounts and gave them pesos after the evaluation. It was something more or less similar to what happened in the U.S. in 1971 with the gold that... <laughs> You know, they took the gold and then uh, yes, devaluate yeah. uh, the, the money. <laughs> Something. So basically, the the needs of uh, of the state are always above the needs of the, the people. So if they need your money, they will take it. They they will not ask you, right? They will take it. Uh, so don't let your money in the banks, and uh, of course. Those are the strategies for those that want to fight. Right? You can run or fight, basically. But there are other other strategies that I think they, they can work. Uh, not all are the same, but um, you can, for example, just leave the leave the currency. Don't use the currency. I mean, it's basically what my my brother does, right? It's uh, he doesn't use the the currency except for for the day to day things, but you don't save in, in in local currency. You don't think in local currency. You don't deal with local currency. That is basically something that also happens uh, if you want to buy a, a house, for example. Uh, well, uh, everything is denominated in, in US dollars, for example, because otherwise it, it is impossible to, to, to keep updated with the, the, the numbers. And finally, leave the economy. That is basically what many of uh, the, the Argentinians um, developers uh, uh, do. Uh, basically, you don't work uh, for local companies. You don't receive local currency. You don't anything. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's like, in fact, uh, in, in, in the extreme, you don't read local news. <laughs> so um, it's, it's like uh, mentally you are in, in, in the cyber space, if you want. Uh, in, in fact, Something very, very curious is what happened, for example, with us, with the, the, the capital control. Uh, the, the, someone said, I think it was yesterday in Twitter, that uh, Argentina, yeah. Argentina is perhaps the, the, the only country where you cannot legally use your legally earned uh, dollars. That is something that is crazy, but it's true, because um, we have this capital control that basically means that you cannot, uh, the, the money cannot flow out of the country, right? And, sorry, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, the, so the, the, yeah go on. Go on. You know, the, 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 the money cannot um, flow out the country, right? Um, so it doesn't sound too bad, right? Because you say, okay, if the money can it can flow in but cannot flow out, then it's like it, it sounds somehow good. But the the problem is that the, the 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 state don't let the money leave the country because it wants to use that that money, right? And um, What's the problem? If you can, for example, you cannot, I mean, are you going to invest in a country that has become a trap where you can send money 
to but cannot get money from. I mean, imagine you invest in the country, right? Uh, and you, okay, make some money there, right? You cannot uh, take your revenue out. No. So nobody is going to invest, right? But that's not all because also the state wants your money. They want your dollar. So what, for example, if you are a, a, a freelancer like me, for example, right? Uh, what are you going to do? If you, if I work for you and you pay me, right? The government will take 50% more or less of, of that money. I mean, they will take the, the dollars and will give me pesos, right? Of course, the free market could pay me about or above 200 pesos per dollar. But the government will give me about 100 mm. per dollar, right? So they take a bit more than half, right? But after that, after that, all what I, I will start spending that money and I will pay, of course, a bit more than 50% because, of course, I have to pay my, my taxes because I have exported software, right? And I have to be the, the, the BIT and, and, and the 170 uh, different uh, taxes that we have here. So, yeah. if, so they take 50% and then they take 50% of the 50%, right? And finally, what I, I, I have is uh, 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 the remaining pesos that after after that they will take fifty percent because of the 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 inflation tax, right? So they take fifty percent, then the fifty percent, and the 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 fifty percent of the the, the 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 remaining. So it's 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 crazy. So what happened? In in actually, the capital control means that. Nobody can take money out of the country because it's, it's not allowed. And nobody is going to take money in the country because nobody's so idiot to do that, right? So uh, people still work in Argentina, is, is still produce in Argentina, right? But they don't enter the money. The money remains out. And it, it can be in, in any form. It, it, before it was to be the, the most common uh, mechanism was having a, 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 a bank account in the US or in another country. Um, now it's much more common to use uh, Bitcoins and, or perhaps some other cryptocurrencies because Argentina has gone full of shitcoins and mm. companies companies do the same, right? This is not something that only uh, uh, tax avoidance uh, individuals do. Companies do exactly the same because they, for example, create a, the same company in, in Chile or in, in, in Uruguay or whatever. So they work from Argentina, they produce in Argentina, but the money is... Uh, is um, in it, dollars, basically. In, in dollars, but in in in, in Uruguayan uh, banks or in, in banks placed on Chile, so the money stop uh, coming. Yeah, yeah. We have Arc played here as a speaker who wants to probably join discussion. So you can go ahead, Arc played, ask your question or join in. Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you for being here, Lucas. So uh, I'm located in Canada, and uh, traditionally in Canada for the past 20-odd years, our average inflation rate has been about 2% up at least until coronavirus started. Um, so, of course, I'm, I'm very lucky to, to live in you know, more of the first world side of things where um, we don't experience such volatility in our government's taxation and, and currency in general. Um, but I'm just, I was listening to you there talk about... Um, you know, how much is taken and how, how people in your country are starting to switch to digital, digital assets as their kind of primary means of transacting amongst each other, at least, um, in, in a, an attempt to avoid government. Um, can you explain the feelings behind holding digital assets that would be considered 
volatile in nature when it comes to their pricing. As you know, I, I will keep my daily expenses in Canadian currency or even U.S. dollars to avoid volatility so that I can maintain stable amounts for my transactions and then hold my portfolio um, in digital assets and investment and accept the volatility on that. So what is it like to live in, a, in an economy where either side of things you are experiencing, either volatility or extreme ta uh, taxation? Um, okay, I, first of all, I, I'm a software developer, right? So I have no uh, a daily contact or daily experience with all that um, side of the economy. Right? But hmm. it seems we have lost Lucas again. So we'll have to wait a minute before he rejoins. In the meantime, if somebody else would like to join in, go ahead, please, and raise your hand. And uh, one thing that's quite interesting that Lucas mentioned is if you're living in a high inflation environment, you basically want to take up as much debt as possible and push your liabilities into the future as most as possible. And that's actually applicable in many countries now. Because, for example, in the eurozone, the inflation the inflation rate is like five to ten percent, depends on what country you are living in. But the interest rates are being kept at zero, so uh, the the incentive there is just to take the mortgage, uh, have it as long as possible, the down payments, like thirty year mortgage, uh, fix your interest rate on that, and basically uh, let inflation do its job. And it's crazy, this works and has been working for several years now in economies such as uh, the European Union. So it's not just like high inflation or hyperinflation countries. We, ha we are living in a upside down world where this is possible even in like Germany. Well, it's so, just even so surprising when, when things like we, we had that recent crash where in my own personal portfolio, I lost 70% of my net worth in that portfolio. And to, to imagine living in a country that is essentially forced to live with that volatility in their daily wallet um, when, they're, when they're forced to, to have digital assets because their own currency is so unstable. Yes, yeah, that, that's right. I, I'm back. Sorry. Uh, basically, the, the, the only thing good thing about the, the inflation is that it's predictable. You know the inflation is going to be here. It's not something that will surprise you. It's not something that with, you say, oh, what happened, right? We know that the next year or this year to uh, 2022, we are going to have the same or even uh, greater inflation, right? So basically, uh, that is a kind of volatility that is quite constant, right? So um, it's, it's almost that you can plan, you can create a plan because it's, you, you have some, there is no doubt about the, the inflation. But anyway, the, the, about the cryptocurrencies, for example, um, if you compare the, the volatility of Bitcoin with, uh, with pesos, even when Bitcoin goes down extremely, right, uh, from time to time, if you measure that with the Argentinian pesos, you say, oh, Thanks God, I, I'm I'm having uh, Bitcoin because if Bitcoin goes down 50 percent, for example, right, and then it recovers a bit, and and you don't. But in two years, if you stay in pesos, you have lost much much more, right? And and it will not bounce, it will not go up again. The value of the pesos, the, 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 the value of the pesos, you know, it's going down, 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 down. So, um, and what I know about the, the local economy is that many, many people is using um, these uh, stable coins because basically I suspect that well they are they are not volatile at all or no at all. I mean, are not uh, the volatility is it's just small and also because in the minds of uh, Argentinian Argentinian people, dollar is the is the salvation, 
It's, it, it, it's hard to, uh, to explain to my mother that dollar is, the US dollar is not the solution. Uh, in fact, I, she sold a, a house, right? And I, I, I try to say, hey, mom, buy just a few yeah, the cents of uh, bitcoins. And she doesn't, she, she, she doesn't want because uh, the, the US dollar was the salvation for her in the past. And she believes uh, it is still true. And of course, she doesn't know that the inflation in the U.S. is seventy seven percent, right? Or, or this uh, CPI index that they have, she doesn't know. So I think for that reason is that in Argentina the the stable coins, especially uh, tied to the U.S. dollars, are so so popular. Perfect. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks. So, Lucas, if you could maybe describe a little bit uh, more what's the state of Bitcoin adoption in Argentina? Like, uh, are there like Bitcoin meetups, YouTube channels, Bitcoin books being uh, published? And is it discussed like on uh, local news and such? Okay, I, I have to disappoint you because basically I live in a, I live the economy, I live the country <laughs> spiritually and mentally, so I have no idea. Uh, I can tell you that the people that I uh, deal with um, from time to time, for example, you know, in this uh, currencies black market, uh, they operate all of them in 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 cryptocurrencies and uh, we call them cuevas or cueveros that that means caves that are like uh, places where people exchange uh, currencies right it's uh, they all they all um, receive and, and, and sell and, ex and and change cryptocurrencies by by other cryptocurrencies or by by pesos and US dollars. Uh, I I know that. Um, but I don't know much more, sorry. Yeah, no problem. And maybe, um, are you aware of any like governmental initiative to uh, adopting Bitcoin or making Bitcoin like payments easier? Because I've read uh, some interview with uh, Argentinian president And he basically said, like, there is no reason to say no to an idea of Bitcoin becoming a legal tender. Then there was a proposal by some congressmen to allow businesses to pay their employees in Bitcoin. Uh, do you follow, actually, any such developments or not at all? Well, yes. Basically, what they want is to tax Bitcoin, right? Uh, that is the only thing that they care about. Um, and now Bitcoin miners, that there are a, a, a few, but I think it's important amount of miners in the south of the country. Now they are being um, accused of producing or causing the, the electric power shortages that we have suffering <laughs> recently. So, um, of course, given, given that, given that they are producing this um, power outage, uh, now they, are, they have to pay the, the electricity uh, a bit more than before. Um, no, no, no. Uh, the, the Argentina has suffered these hyperinflations basically because the, the state wants to spend money They, they they love the the printing machine. Yeah, so you're skeptical to any initiatives to adopt Bitcoin because it's going to be just for uh, the purpose of taxing it more or taxing it at all. Oh, you may have lost you again. So please try to rejoin. And in the meantime, if anyone is... Uh, would like to ask some question or join in, 
this will be the last round of questions because we have crossed an hour, so we will we will probably be closing soon. And Lucas is rejoining. <laughs> And we've got some one other request by BTC Dragon Lord. Welcome. Oh. All right. Hi. But I'm really curious, Lucas. What was the first thing that you noticed that started increasing? in price during the beginning of the hyperinflationary phase. How did it really start off? Okay, okay. Yes. Uh, just let me let me answer finish answer the, the previous question. I, I will go with, sure, with okay. basically they may my, my my answer was no. They love their printing machine and they will do whatever it needs to be done to to give the privilege of printing as much Argentinian pesos as possible. So no, no way. They will never, 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 never accept uh, legalized Bitcoin or not legalized, I mean, make it legal tender. No, there are people in the internet that is saying next country is Argentina. No, Argentina is not. I'm 100% I'm sure of that. Okay. And then uh, what the first that goes up? Okay. Uh, Obviously, financial instruments are the first thing that goes up. The more liquid assets, basically U.S. dollars in, in this case, is the first thing that goes up. You, you see that uh, it, it goes from one peso to two, three, four pesos, and the prices still don't move. So you say, okay, look, the dollar is crazy, right? Uh, but after that, all the, the rest of the prices uh, follow that. That's why they, they used to say, I mean, the politicians used to say that the inflation is, is, is produced by the dollar. Is the dollar the, the one that produces the inflation? So they try to control the capital or control the dollar, right? Because if they allow the dollar to, to go up, all the prices of the economy will follow that and the dollar can create the, the inflation. So that thing that they want, that they really want is the thing that is creating the inflation. So it's, it's really crazy, but that's, that's how it works. So the first thing is that. Uh, of course, another thing that you cannot see, for example, uh, houses. Uh, or real estate, things that you, you you can see, but given you are not buying a house every day, you sometimes it's, it's not something that uh, it's not so important for you. But it is, it is. All other other important thing is that we have fifty one percent of inflation, but those um, products that are in the in the basket that the government uh, used to measure the inflation are all in a big, big percentage under uh, price control. So <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, yes, you are measuring something that you know the price is not the, 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 the real one. It's, it's under price control. So we really don't know what the inflation is. Of course, our, our method for measuring inflation is is at least a bit more honest than, for example, the American one, because they don't have the same basket. They every time they measure a different basket, right? We we measure the same basket, but um, the government controls the prices of the, that that basket. So it's it's basically a lie. We don't. Nobody knows who, what's the, the the real inflation and the the all the prices goes up, but at different speed. There are things that are 200% increase and other only 10% increase. So it's, it's not linear, right? It's, it's not that everything went down 50%. No, no, there are things that are really, really, really 
I don't know, 200% up? Sure, of course. And how fast does this click to people? Like, like how, like, like, like humanly, how fast can you react to this inflation? Do you, do you have like an experience with this, or do you have any people like that were really late to reacting to this type of high for inflation? Uh, no, because most people, most people uh, uh, react to to inflation. So once you have inflation, right? You uh you you start um how to say adapting to that inflation right with different strategies that are changing all the time because something that works today in two weeks doesn't work anymore because something changed because there are more controls so you know it's 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 you are you, it's a moving target uh, of course if you can smell inflation right uh, with enough time, you can do something. For example, if you know that inflation is coming, right, you can prepare to leave your, your job, uh, right? Because, you know, if you are an employee, <laughs> you will not be... It, it, I mean, it's hard to be an employee during uh, high inflations, right? You can buy a house, for example, or buy something that you can use in the future. You know that, for example, Saving, we have this idea of saving that is saving money because when we say my save my savings, you, you what you say is your money, but in, in times of high, high, high inflation rates, you can save in noodles or in rice or you can in whatever, it doesn't matter because the only thing that you cannot have is money, right? It's, it's the only thing. Or, of course, if you can, dollars, if you can. Bitcoins, of course, of course. Uh, but so, it, you know, people that is really poor, they have no strategy, really, right? They, they, they have only enough to buy food, so they cannot save, they cannot do anything. So what the strategy can they follow? Well, they will go to the supermarket the f as fast as possible and buy as much as possible and, and, and in order to to have enough food for the for the month otherwise if you, what you can what you don't buy today it depends how high the inflation is right uh, but in, in in times of hyperinflation um, uh, you have to spend all your salary today right <laughs> and the next the rest of the month i don't know uh, Oh, something curious, you know, I, I told my, my, my father about this, this talk and say, you know, uh, uh, that someone wants to have this, this um, talk and, and know more about hyperinflation. Do you remember what the strategies did you follow to, to survive the hyperinflation? And, and he said, no, I don't remember anything. So, okay, I say, okay, this is not something <laughs> unusual in my father. So I went with with my mother, my, my, my mom remembers everything. So I, I, I repeated the question, do your mom remember something? And she said, no, I don't remember. So I started asking people, right? Uh, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, and they don't remember anything. And they say, what, what happened here? And you know what? It's, I think, I think it's a bad, it's like a traumatic uh, situation. And, Somehow, this is my theory, right? That things somehow the your your mind mm, blocks those memories. That's why they don't remember. I, I cannot believe they they cannot remember anything. It's really hard to believe. So, uh, I mean, they remember that the prices go, uh, went out uh, uh, went up uh, really fast. Well, but that's basically the definition of hyperinflation. That, that's not a, a memory, that's, that's something that is obvious, right? So they don't remember anything. Um, so it, it, it's like, <laughs> it's easier to repeat the, the, the problem if people don't remember. Yeah. Um, one of my last questions is, uh, are you going to follow up on writing your book on hyperinflation? 
Well, you know, my it, it was uh, um, available for the public because it, it it is public, but it was never published. I just shared that with you. Just I don't know why. <laughs> and, yeah, but it's called then, like introductions. So uh, I was curious if you are going to write other sections. Well, now I I I, <laughs> I think it's it, it's a good idea to to continue with it. I, I don't know how how much time I have available, but it sounds like a good idea. Yeah, and maybe one last other thing. I was curious if you could recommend some uh, high quality Spanish resources on Bitcoin. If you follow like uh, stuff in Spanish, like podcasters, YouTubers, blogs. No, there, there is a lot now. It, uh, it, it is yeah, uh, high, high quality. I don't follow much, but the one that I, I really like is uh, Lunaticoin. Lunaticoin is an Spanish podcaster mm-hmm. that cre- creates really, really high quality material and high quality discussions. Uh, I I love what he does. Um, yeah. I Yes. Perhaps it's the only one that I would. If well, I know there are lots and there are many that I like, but he's the the best, I think. Yeah, that's a good recommendation. So we've got a Nopara here as a as a speaker who joined in. Hi. Hey guys, this is an awesome conversation, and I think it's really important. It's a uh, because we are going to probably live through a hyper inflation phase. Uh, maybe it will be a bit different because hyper Bitcoinization is also going to happen in the same time. But uh, what I want to what I want to bring up here is that you know okay so inflation is theft and central bankers are thieves and criminals those are stealing money and stealing everyone's money and 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 taking that money and where do they put it but you know is 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 it really is it really a, a theft i mean if 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 they are thieves then they are a pretty shitty thieves because they are stealing way too much they are stealing so much that they are basically destroying the economy because inflation is so bad right so so how can we have thieves those 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 are like 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 if you have some if if you know then you wouldn't steal that much so 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 my question is that is it possible that inflation they don't stop printing money because the because if they would then the consequences would be even worse or or, or, or what's going on here? So what's the other side there? What, what if they stop printing money and, and what, what will happen then? Um, Is the question for me? Yes. Okay, I'm not an expert, you know, that I think the, 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 the problem is that the, the state is, is always growing. It's, it's always growing. In, in Argentina, that's easy to see because uh, when I was uh, a boy, a, a, a kid, I mean, uh, the state was something like 15% of the economy and now it's uh, 45, I think, percent of the economy. So it, 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 it grows and grows and grows and grows. And even, even with the amount of money that they take from the economy, right, they still... Um, need more because that's why they create inflation and also they have a debt. Now we have a, a huge debt with the with the IMMF, right? So that we are, let's say, negotiating now. So basically it's taxing a lot, taxing future generations a lot with debt and taxing again with inflation, right? So all that amount of money goes to the state. So if they stop printing, right, they need to spend less. 
but that is against the logic of the, the state because basically all the politicians have an army here in Argentina it's really an army of um, like parastatal para status um, how to say organizations lots and lots and lots and lots of people that receive money from the, the state right you cannot stop paying that people that people is dangerous that people it's it they survive thanks to the to the paycheck that they receive from the state for doing nothing right so um those organizations can become violent really, really, really easy. You cannot stop paying that. You cannot stop paying uh, other um, uh, internal organizations that are really, really huge, right? That, that all the political, uh, political what? I, would say. I, I mean, are not jobs that are needed, are just jo jobs created in the state just to to pay you for something, right? So every politician has their wife, all their kids, <laughs> I mean, their, their, their descendancy, and their, their, their girlfriend, all the people is working in the state, right? And there are, that's why the state grows and grows and grows and never goes down. You can never size down the state, right? Because, I mean, it's, the politicians will not do that because they receive the money that that is their money right there that is money that they take from you they, in fact they take more money for you because they want more not less right so uh, what can happen well things can go out of the control really really fast really really fast especially because there are there are more or less, if I'm not wrong, 8 million people working, right? And producing for paying to 20 million people that do nothing, right? So basically, although that's why the, the, the government takes, you know, a, a huge amount of money from you. I, 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 I told but they take 50% and they take the 50% of the rest of the 50% and the 50% again. And then, so, you know, because eight people have to work for, for them and for other 20 million people, additional 20 million people. So imagine what can happen if you stop paying to those 20 million people, right? So it's 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 pro many of them are, are 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 let's say can become violent really really fast. So the the solution is delay the 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 implosion, right? So how how can we? I mean, we know this is not possible. This doesn't work, but we cannot stop. So let's give this eight million people working and let extract more and more worth uh, 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 until, I don't know, until, I don't know, they leave the country or they go to the, to, to, to the dark, uh, you know, they start working, <laughs> I don't know, for, for, for companies uh, in, in, in other countries, I don't know. I think that's the, the reason. Yeah, and once you get past a certain point, there is just no way to hold the printing press and have a balanced budget. And it's not just the case of Argentina. Like, for example, uh, US budget was balanced like four times over the past 50 years, balanced or in surplus. And actually, Joe Biden uh, had like the best answer for this question. Why do governments keep on printing money? And he basically said, we need to uh, increase the debt ceiling so that we can pay our previous debts. That's the nature of the reality we are living in with fiat currencies. We just have to go into more debt and print more money and basically uh, through this mechanism of uh, government bonds. 
just in order to uh, satisfy the previous creditors. And as Lucas says, if you hold this process, there's going to be a revolt in the country, and not just Argentina. It's European Union, United States, Japan, like all of these large economies are heavily in debt. And basically the only way out is through inflation. Yeah, Lucas is rejoining. Thanks. This uh, actually reminds me, I think I've read it in Anatomy of the State uh, from Rothbard, is that what's, what's, what's really problematic about uh, spreading uh, freedom and, and, uh, and uh, state, anti-state ideas is that the population a huge part of the population is actually part of that criminal organized gang that's called the government. So, you know, like uh, you are trying to convince them about something that they gonna, they they should not be doing what they are doing. They are completely invested in that and uh, kind of have no options. So it, it's like, like you're trying to convince that unconvincible and and that's a really bad situation yeah Rothbard's anatomy of the state is yet another great text to recommend everyone so can 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 i can i say something sure, more just, sure. just just because you know something has changed uh, in, in these years since i i'm um, I was a, a kid because in 2001, after the, the, the one really big crisis here, uh, some politicians came with this idea of giving free money to people. But they were only a few. I think they were 10,000 or something like that, 10,000 people. Free money for them just to help them because they, they were unemployed and if otherwise they could be, uh, you know... Um, uh, used by bad people to do bad things, or you know, so f or exploited by um, other other people. Well, it 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 sounded really really uh, unbelievable. I I was not I couldn't believe what I was uh, hearing that in that moment uh, because free money. I mean, give ma people money for doing nothing. It was. Oh, it was something hard to believe. Okay, they were just ten thousand. Right? After that, that that logic never changed, and now they are 20, 20 million. Of course, don't, not all. Don't those twenty million are the same, right? There are also public servants. Many of them, or perhaps. The, the, the huge majority of the public servants are, are, are good, right? Uh, but why? 20 million. So it's the helicopter money, money, right? The helicopter money. But that money that the helicopter is throwing comes from somewhere. Value. At least the value of those, uh, that currency comes from, or that money comes from somewhere, right? Uh, and this is, in the end, um, some kind of uh, slavery, but people cannot see the slavery. They cannot see the change. It's basically, um, did we lose Lucas again? Yes, it seems so. So. Lucas, if you can rejoin, and we'll just have the final remarks. Argentine internet, it's like <laughs> the electricity back then. Yeah, I see. Lucas, if you can try once more. Yeah, he's, he's reconnected. Mm -hmm. So maybe it would be nice to hear from him that what he thinks that you know in the in the Western world is is inflation is really really going to happen and if it is it does then is it gonna happen soon? 
Yeah, everybody seems to be surprised about the level of inflation and even the professional forecasts uh, like undershoot the current inflation levels. So it seems like nobody is prepared to have higher persistent inflation. He, he said something that inflation happens really, really fast at one point. So was that some rhetoric or... Or was that, did that mean like there is some inflection point when inflation just hits and there is no coming back from that? Uh... Yeah, Lucas, are you back? I'm back, yes. Okay. So did... do you think, yeah. No, basically have... that, that um, there, there are people who say that hyperinflations are, are rare. And uh, the, cons- the the reasons are not uh, monetary reasons, right? But hyperinflation comes after inflation always. It's not that you are okay one day, uh, one day everything is okay, and next day you have a huge hyperinflation. First, you have many many years or of inflation, then high inflation, right? Or very high inflation, and one day. It can happen that you have an hyperinflation. It's not guaranteed, but you are inflating a balloon during years and years and years and years. And one day, something bad happens. It can be, I don't know how long it can, it can last, yeah, that, but one day something will happen and uh, you will have a, a huge crisis. And um, people used to say, okay, yes, but the, the, the problem is not that you were inflating the balloon for years and years and years. The problem was that, I don't know, uh, a war in China, something like that. It's external, an external force or something like that. Uh, of course, inflation, the problem with inflation is that this concept of hospitalization, that it, it, it tends to go up. If you do nothing, it will go up. Uh, so it's it's easier for 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 political reasons to just uh, apply capital control, then price control, then tax more, then um, take debt. You know, because in that way you can delay the the, the problem. Every but you are not solving the problem. So it can happen that one day you have a hyperinflation. But again, you can, you can have inflation for many, many, many years before an hyperinflation, right? So it's not like Michael Saylor that say, hey, we are going to have an hyperinflation tomorrow. No, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so at all. How's price controls are a sign of of inflation, of hyperinflation, or or where does that come in, late or or early? So the reason why I'm asking is because in Hungary they they introduce price control for 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 a couple of things, and you know no one actually cares about it. There is a libertarian party, a new one, and and that's the only only people who are talking about it and everyone is laughing at them and telling them that they are the most dangerous people because they want to downsize the state and stuff like that. So so no one cares that they, they put put extra price controls there. And and, and, and it's not just price controls. Um, they they put on price controls and then they said that those those shops those don't those because People try to figure out, okay, well, I cannot sell my stuff for that amount, how much it would be worth for me to sell it. So what they figured is that, okay, so we are going to just close down until this craziness goes away. But then they they created a new regulation that says they cannot close down. And uh, so anyway, when, when does price control come in? Late or early? How, how bad are we at hung, in Hungary right now? Okay. With, well, you have to know, I, I'm sure you know that uh, all, all the economy is under some kind of uh, 
regulations. For example, uh, typically banks, right, are under strict regulation. They cannot mm, uh, charge you with this or with that, and the accounts has to be this or that. All what is electricity is under, I mean, all the services, electricity, water, blah, blah, all that has, um, are already always under price control, right? Uh, transportation is also under price control. The thing is that we don't, we cannot see that, right? But one day they start controlling the price of food. And when they start controlling the price of food is because you have yet a, a, a big problem, right? Because, <laughs> because it, it means, right? That people, that, that, um, that inflation is starting to be noticed by people. People are starting uh, getting uh, angry, right? They, they, they don't like it. So uh, in that moment, they uh, put this uh, price control uh, on place, right? And the strategies, uh, it, they never work because what the government, the government doesn't understand is that it's not the merchant the one that put the price are we the consumers the ones that are willing to pay for that that amount right because if the price is too high I, I, I don't buy it and that's it how it works um, so price control never 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 work uh, never uh, so here for example and the same happened in Venezuela you say for example the, the government can't come to you and say, okay, you cannot buy, uh, sell milk, right, above this price. So if for you that works, because you can make some money selling milk at that price, okay, you, you accept the, 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 the deal and the government take a, fo a, a, a photo or picture with you and everything. But once you start losing money, you don't sell milk anymore, right? So what can you do? Well, the, the deal was, okay, the, the, the common milk or the milk that the poor people consumed have to have this price. Okay, give me vitamins. I will add C and D vitamins to this milk. And now it's not milk anymore. It's an special milk. It's milk with vitamins. This, we, this was out of the deal. And then I can sell that milk to whatever I want because... It, it, it's out of our, our, our uh, how to say, yes, the, 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 the deal with the government, right? So the milk, the normal milk, that disappears, right? And everything disappears. Everything disappears. So that's why, the, and, and the government knows that. So it, it's tried to, uh, we have price control, but we don't control it, control it, control them too much, right? So because, Otherwise, it's, it's problematic. Uh, well, but again, the, 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 the dangerous prices, the dangerous prices are the price of electricity, the price of water, the price of transportation, because in the end, you have no more water, no more electricity, no more transportation. Uh, for example, now we have con price control on the internet. I don't know if you, if you know what I mean, right? So the, 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 the connectivity to internet is under price control. So, huh. so that's why we are still losing you <laughs> because it's price controlled and crappy. Um, it, ca it can be, it can be. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, so uh, I'm curious if there are any other questions. And if not, thank you, Nopara, for joining in for your questions and of course thank you Lucas for giving us a rundown of how it is living in high inflation and hyperinflation so uh, will you actually be at uh, LabitConf because this year LabitConf is taking place in Argentina right uh, I don't know yet uh, I would like to be there for sure yes yeah so the company sponsors your trip, Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> I will be there then. <laughs> okay, cool. So I guess I'll meet you there. 
looking forward to it. Oh, it would be great. Yes, yes, it could. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining in, listening, and asking your questions. And for the next time, I'm still not sure who's going to be the next guest, but it's going to be someone uh, interesting once again. Maybe someone from Venezuela to have all the hyperinflation countries. All right. So thank you very much. Enjoy your rest of the day. Enjoy your evening. And I hope to see you next time on this sessions of Fiat Free. So goodbye then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys.